First of all, with the rumours of AMD Zen 2 CPUs doing 4.5 GHz, some might have been disappointed, believing that these clocks will be a problem, because Intel will be having at least 5 GHz throughout the next generation. However, 4.5 GHz for a Zen 2 CPU isn't all that bad. Of course, them hitting 5 GHz will be better, but 4.5 GHz should suffice. At 4.5 GHz, AMD's Zen architecture is running at 90% of that of Intel, so you would need a pretty powerful GPU to find that 10% deficit. Now of course, clocks are only part of the equation, another part is IPC, and some may be surprised to find that Zen and Skylake both have the same IPC, almost exactly the same. Now that doesn't mean that clock for clock in games the two will perform the same, there's a lot more to gaming performance than just clocks and IPC, maybe something for another video. However, both Intel and AMD do have the same IPC. A real example is these two Cinebench runs, a Ryzen 5 2600X at 5GHz with 6 cores and 12 threads up against an i7-8700K also at 5GHz, 6 cores and 12 threads with the AMD CPU pulling ahead by 1.5%, well into their own to run variants, effectively demonstrating the same IPC. The next piece of evidence is looking at the 2600X versus 8700K at 5GHz on W1024. The Zen CPU completed it in 1 minute and 30 seconds, whereas the Skylake CPU completed in 1 minute and 33 seconds, making the Intel CPU 3% slower. Again, this falls into run to run variants. The largest IPC gap in favour of Intel I found was a 4% increase in GPU Pi 1 billion, which is just on the edge between run to run variants and any sort of significance. These tests essentially show how Zen and Skylake have the same IPC, and how this is, is what the rest of this video is going to explain. So if you want more proof, then check this. I dug up this golden nugget from the depths of the internet. Whilst it calls itself an optimization guide, this is a bit more in depth than just a guide. Written by Dr. Agne Fogg at the Technical University of Denmark, this is probably the most well written report I've ever seen about modern hardware. Dr. Fogg started this in 1996 and has since updated the report with an in depth analysis of most every single x86 CPU released since the original Pentium. CPUs from VIA, Intel, and AMD and both high performance and low power processor architectures. This really is a fantastic report, a link to it will be found down below. Anyway, having read the reports section on Skylake and Zen, it's evident that the Zen cores are massively more powerful than the Skylake cores, with a much wider backend, giving it considerably higher peak IPC. However, Zen is being held back by a weak front end. Looking at the section on Skylake, of which the 8700K is, Dr. Fogg stated that the Skylake architecture may fetch up to 16 bytes of code per clock per core from its L1 cache. Now looking at the Zen architecture, Fogg shows that this architecture may fetch up to 32 bytes per clock from its L1 I cache. This is up to twice of that of Skylake. However, during testing, Dr. Fogg found out that the Zen architecture was typically held back to, quote, slightly more than 16 bytes per clock, rarely exceeding 17, unquote. This restricts the Zen CPU to the same performance levels as a Skylake CPU at the same clocks, as they may only fetch the same amount of code per clock. When we look at the decoders, both Zen and Skylake CPUs have decoders that can handle up to 4 macro ops per clock, that is an x86 instruction. However, Skylake's decoders may only develop up to 4 micro ops per clock. However, Zen has the capability to produce up to 6 micro ops per clock. Only assuming two of the macro ops generate two micro ops once decoded. These aren't simple instructions, therefore, for the most part, using basic x86 instructions, Skylake and Zen have roughly the same decoding throughput unless the code is recompiled to use more complex instructions with Zen in mind. When it comes to the decoded micro op cache, the Skylake CPU can have up to 1536 entries over 32 sets. However, the Zen architecture has a capacity of 2048 micro ops over the same 32 sets, because each set in a Zen CPU can store up to 8 micro ops each compared to Skylake's 6. Both architectures use 8 weight associativity. What this shows us is the Zen architecture was built for wider cores, having a wider decoded micro op cache, and not necessarily faster cores. 
Now, skipping some of the middle end and going to the execution units, Skylake is shown to have 8 execution units in total, giving for a theoretical maximum of 8 microops per clock. However, Dr. Fogg states that the throughput rarely exceeds 4 microops per clock. Quote, Skylake has a number of execution units accessed through 8 execution ports. This gives a theoretical maximum throughput of 8 microps per clock cycle in the execution units. However, the throughput of the whole design rarely exceeds 4 instructions per clock. Unquote. The architecture has 4 integer execution units, 2 float units, and 2 branch prediction units, which also include the AGUs. Looking back at Zen, this architecture has a total of 10 execution units, making the core 25% wider than Skylake, or Skylake has 80% the width of Zen. The architecture has 4 integer ALUs, however only one ALU may do complex integer arithmetic, such as multiplication and division, where they all can do simple arithmetic, such as adding and subtraction. The architecture has 4 float FPUs, making one Zen core equal to two Skylake cores in float workloads, theoretically. On both architectures, simple integer arithmetic takes only one clock cycle to complete inside the ALU. However, float addition for Zen takes three cycles, compared to Skylake's four cycles, actually making the Skylake's FPU addition throughput at 5 GHz slightly lower than that of Zen running at 4 GHz. This of course doesn't mean that the Zen CPU will do more floats in the same time, as this is the peak theoretical FPU throughput. These latencies also discount other latencies found in the pipeline, of which will be slower on Zen, as that is clocked at only 4 GHz, versus the rest of the Skylake's 5 GHz pipeline. Zen has a single precision multiplication latency of 3 cycles, compared to again the 4 of Skylake. However, at double precision, both architectures have a 4 cycle latency. In FMA instructions, the Zen architecture has a latency of 5 cycles, compared to Skylake's 4 cycles. And as I may show some other time, long lists of sequentially dependent FMA instructions on Zen are an absolute worst case scenario. For Zen, the L1 cache has a latency of 4 clock cycles, and the same is true for Skylake. However, Zen has 64 kilobytes of L1 instruction cache, twice that of Skylake's 32 kilobytes. But interestingly, Zen's L1 instruction cache has a 4-way set associativity, whereas Skylake's has 8-way. This means that the Skylake cache, whilst being half the size, can operate on more small and unrelated blocks of code, giving Skylake's L1 cache an advantage at quickly switching between unrelated work items. For both architectures, the L1 data cache is a 32 kilobyte and 4-way cache. Zen, the first generation, has a latency of 17 cycles for the L2 cache compared to Skylake's 14. However, AMD got the L2 cache in Zen Plus down to 11 cycles as shown by Anantech's review linked below. Also, Zen has a whopping 512 kilobytes of L2 cache per core, again, twice that of Skylake's 256 kilobytes. So with the Zen Plus, not only does AMD have twice the cache, but they also have 22% L2 cache latency than the Skylake L2 cache. But there's more. Whilst Zen's L1 instruction cache has a 4-way set associativity, basically meaning it had to fit physically larger blocks of code in than Skylake's cache, the L2 cache comes with 8-way set associativity, which allows for the L2 cache in the Zen architecture to hold more blocks of code and pass only the relevant ones to the L1 cache as needed. Compared to Skylake's method of keeping everything remotely useful in the L1 cache, in case it's needed at some point. Also, Zen Plus's increased dependency on the L2 cache here, however, is not going to hurt, given that it has 22% lower L2 cache latency. Looking at the L3 cache, Dr. Fogg states that the Zen architecture has a latency of 40 cycles, of which Anantech almost agrees with, as in, they find the L3 cache latency to be 39 cycles, not too far off. Either way, we can believe that it's around 40 cycles. When it comes to second gen Ryzen, Anantech found the L3 cache's latency had been dropped to just 30 cycles. This is against the 34 to 85 cycle latency of the Skylake architecture as found out by Dr. Fogg. Looking at the graph by Anantech, 
the particular car that was tested was to found to be 36 cycles away, confirming Dr. Fogg's results. The reason for the large access time variation on the L3 cache for Skylake is that the Skylake architecture operates on a ring bus, meaning that not all cars are the same distance from the L3 cache. Therefore, the closest car was found to be 34 cycles away, and the farthest being 85 cycles. Unfortunately, the report does not state what Skylake CPU was used for testing, or what speed the ring bus was running at. Therefore, I cannot find out how many cars were tested. Now sticking with the L3 cache for a bit longer, we can see that both Skylake and Zen have 2 megabytes per core of L3 cache with 16 way set associativity. So they're the same, right? Not at all. Firstly, the L3 cache of Zen is split into two separate clusters, one in each CCX, essentially putting a massive latency penalty between the two should a car need to access another CCX's cache, which they can and will do. This is shown by Anantec's cache latency graph where the L3 latency spikes to over 10 nanoseconds at a stride greater than 4000. Now let's turn to the architectural bottlenecks, as discovered by Dr. Fogg. Looking for bottlenecks in the Skylake architecture, Skylake's front end is limited to fetching only 16 bytes per cycle from the L1 iCache. This is noted to be a bottleneck in the code that won't fit inside the decoded micro cache or otherwise won't be found there. And whilst Ryzen is also limited to just a tad more than that in terms of fetching, it also has a slightly wider decoded micro cache, although this isn't necessarily a blessing, I might talk about that some other time. Also, the L1 cache of the Ryzen CPUs have a 32 bytes of bandwidth per clock, which is less than that of the Skylake CPUs. The combination of the relatively similar sized micro caches and the L1 cache bandwidth leads to Zen having poor performance for code that cannot sit inside of the micro cache or for branch mispredictions. What all of this means is the limited front end ends up muzzling the larger Zen back end to around that of the Skylake core. So whilst Zen has a physically larger, more powerful core, it in reality is now more powerful than Skylake. What all this means is that for all intents and purposes, Zen has the same IPC as Skylake, particularly when it comes to integers. So why does all of this leave AMD? And why does this mean 4.5 GHz for Zen 2 will be quite potent? Well, Zen 2 was in development even before the launch of the original Zen release, which was released just over one and a half years ago in early 2017. Zen 2 was stated to have had its design completed by Dr. Lisa Su at CES 2018. This means that AMD had plenty of time to expand the CPU front end and open up the full width of the car. Comparatively, this is considerably easier job than adding a new execution unit to a Skylake architecture and then rework the front end to support the new units. This means that it's very likely that the Zen 2 architecture will have a front end capable of driving most of the core's back end. Don't forget, Zen was built from scratch in just 5 years, so imagine what kind of work can be done in just 2 from the front end. And so if AMD Zen 2 CPUs are doing 4.5 GHz, I believe that car for car, AMD could match, if not beat Intel at 5 GHz in IPC sensitive workloads. How well this translates over to games is anyone's guess, but at least for highly parallel tasks like found in production environments, AMD will be king.